up, babies? How y'all doing? It's your boy, WC the Doria. Here coming at you with an AEW review because we just finished watching it. And oh my fucking God. Son. And daughters. Like, like this was better than I expected. And I didn't have, I actually wasn't expecting this, ep this, ep this show to be as good as it turned out to be. And it wasn't because of the match work, but because of the story building and intrigue and excitement for next week's episode. AEW is doing it again. And it's, it's funny. It's funny because they did one of their rare non non opening match moments where basically Moxley came out. And it makes sense. Moxley just won the belt. So he's going to come out, address the crowd, a, a, an amazing, amazing opening promo to get not only get the fans, but also to. Get the fans really sided with him as champ. I mean, we already behind him, but that promo basically saying that, that basically addressing to the AEW crowd that we are nothing without you. This isn't my belt. This wasn't Jericho's belt. This is every one of y'all's belts that helped make this company what it is. Respect, son. Respect. Gotta get the cat in the scene. So, afterwards, Jericho comes out. Obviously, the crowd's gonna come in and sing to the theme because. Judas is a fucking banger. Like, like Judas is a banger, even though it flew under the radar, but I guess it, it really is hot now, and it's like so fucking fitting, and oh my fucking god. Anyway, they have some exchange of words, cool, fine, fucking whatever. I think we get to the first match of the night. The first match of the night was... The Dark Order. Versus SD with Coco Bam. So, honestly... It does exactly what the opening match normally does with AEW because that shit got lit. It got hype. I was fucking with it. But SCU and Cole Cabana come out with the win. Now keep in mind, the Dark Order is like the number one ranked tag team in AEW. They had a 9 and 1 record before taking this L. And they took this L along. This is the whole Dark Order. So it's the Dark Order of Evil Uno and Stu Grayson alongside. Uh, John Silver and whatever the fuck the other dude is. Basically, the Dark Order too. But still, <clears throat> um, after after taking that loss, again, it was actually, again, a very fun match. After taking that loss, though, even we don't come up to basically say that the, that the, that the, uh, that the, the Exalted One is not happy. And when I, and now originally, I was one of those people that was like, Matt Hardy is going to be the Exalted One. But given today's free to delete, given the fact that in terms of kayfabe, we don't have a good time frame for Matt Hardy to be the Exalted One. The Exalted One has already existed. So now the question comes down. I, I, might have, I, I would hate to admit this, but the Exalted One quite possibly could be Brody Lee. I don't believe it should be Brody Lee, but keep in mind that he did come from a cult faction and he was he did have the charisma and excitement to go along with it. But also, also, that's something else to address a little bit later on, but that's neither here nor there. So match goes through. It's all cool, it's all fine and dandy, whatever, you know. Um then we got Big Soul versus Lee Bates. I believe matches might be out of order. Might, I'm super sorry because honestly, matches don't matter near as much. But Big Swole versus Lee Bates, very quick match. Big Swole doing what Big Swole do. Out here dripping sauce on them bras. That's what I like to see. Then we get Cody coming out here on the mic. Cody, you know, Cody's being Cody's like, to be honest, I can't, I, I, I cannot process the fact that I got whipped. I was in a fucking cage match, lost the ring, like, like, and Jeff got the fucking ring and all off the purse all in the same all in the span of this whole feud or this current feud. And I don't think and I don't think me and him are done, but I cannot accept it until he comes out here and shakes my shake, comes out here and says he beat me fair and square. And Jake the fucking Snake Roberts comes the fuck out! You're like I lost I lost my fucking mind! Dude, dude. Dude, Jake the Snake Roberts, one of the most slept on wrestlers of all time. One of the greatest pro my man out there. Like, literally, the man who should have been the higher power. Back in the fucking day, him or, you know, Chris Davis, but Jake the Snake Roberts 
Should have been the higher power back in the fucking day, but wasn't chosen even though he had the mic skills and charisma for it. Comes out in 2020 after everything he's been through. Coming back from the brink of death to deliver the coldest promo. Basically coming out as a harbinger of doom. Boom! And everything that's gonna go boom in the AEW soon. Because he has a client. And as a representative of his client, he came out to deliver a message not only to Cody, but to everybody in AEW. And not only did he deliver that message, he reminds Cody that he is a badass because you do not turn your back on anybody that you are afraid of or that you fear. And walk smooth the fuck off. Ooh, babies, God damn. Ooh, Cody. Cody, boy, I don't know which, I don't know who you done pissed off in the wrestling, in wrestling heaven, but they is gonna for your ass. Like, like they gonna get you. Alright, Zoom Pass, that we're gonna, and also his thing, because who is gonna be Jake the Snake Roberts' client? Now then. Between the, the leader of the Dark Water and now Jake the Snake Roberts having a, having a client, the question is who's going to be now. Ideally, it was thought that the Murder Hawk was going to make his debut tonight, but I did not see him. But he did, like, he did, like, he did, like, you know, like one of my tweets. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and link, link the Twitter in the bio, you know, go ahead and check it, because, you know, yeah, check your boy out. Um, but still, not the point. Um, who's Jake Roberts, Roberts' client? Now then, while I just said, that the exalted one could be Brody Lee. I don't want him to be the, I don't want him to be it. Honestly, give it to Raven. Raven actually could Raven could work just as good, if not better than Hardy, for the exalted one's role. But as far as who Jake the Snake Roberts Klein could be, it's gonna be between Lance Archer and the Murderhawk or Brody Lee. And then I saw somebody post this on, on Twitter because he, because Jake called Cody Caesar. Caesar was was betrayed and murdered in the eyes of March. March, March fifteenth, I believe, is around that time. March eighteenth will be a will be the following dynamite and Brody Lee's ninety day no compete clause will have expired just in time to appear in that in that dynamite in Rochester, New York, where he is from. So. Somehow, some way, I believe we are going to get a resolution to the Brody Lee scenario about what his role is going to be. Is he exalted? Is he? Oh, Whew. I'm sorry, baby. I'm, I'm a little tired. I've been working the whole day, and I just got to watch. Oh, I don't feel like. Right. Is he the exalted one? Is he in a harbinger of doom coming to AEW? What? Okay, push your forward. Um, following that, we have singles action as Chuck Taylor of the Best Friends takes on. Well, oh wait, wait, hang on. No, no. Okay, that's the thing. It's a little late. Uh, uh yeah. Like I said, it's out of order. Cause fucking order, whatever. Um, we have Chuck Taylor versus. No, no, I'm lying. I am out of order. Wrong. That's not it. We're gonna bounce that because next we're gonna have Jake Hagar versus QT Marshall, and uh, you know, well, it's all fun and games until you piss off Jake Hagar, Jericho's bitch, and and next thing you know, fucking you know, QT gets that work put on him. Then NFL got to jump in and get on it. So then. Uh, Dust has to come in and try and hit the mix. Then Cody comes out when they start jumping Dustin. Then they start getting on him. And then Matt Jackson comes out. Nick is hurt. Nick is not. Nick is not here. Matt Jackson comes out. Fucking super kick party and then goes for Jake Hagar. But come on, come on, bro. This this is the invasion. Look, he, this is the he, this year is the year of the heavyweight invasion. Matt, you're not ready for those problems. Get that ass out. Drop out. Get your GED. Shout out to Molari. But one. Hey man, Page comes down on the cowboy shit with his beard head. Does not still drop. Comes in, has the lunch. Hey, hey, calm, calm, hey, hey, do what you do. No, 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 don't, no, I'm fine. Let me. Mm. 
Okay, put my bed down. And I was back to work. And it's dang on, it's SOS match on site. He's over there getting the milk and cookies, and he's double dunking them bitches. Oh, and Jake Hagar gave the best opportunity to try and take him out, but you fucked up, son. You put this man on the ropes. And when you go put this man, Hangman Page, on the ropes, you get the buckshot lariat. Woo! Gets his beer. Matt closed for the handshake, but it's like, fuck out my face, son. <clears throat> okay, I want that match. I I, I, I literally, I, I, I don't want to see Hangman turn on Kenny or completely on the elite. If anything, I just want these niggas to fight. I want them to fight. I want them to do like we did back in the days. Back when you and your homie got beef, y'all plexing and whatnot. Go, okay, knuckle up, fight it out. Afterwards, dap up, we bros again. That's how I want, that's how I want this to end. Moving on. Because now, we get, now I want to say this is where it happens, what we get. Chucky, Chuck Taylor of the Best Friends versus Pat. <laughs> but I don't got time, I got to get through this. Yeah, we got Chuck Taylor of the Best Friends coming out with Trimperilla and Fresh and Squeeze Orange Cassidy going up against Pat. It was a double little match. So like, you know, it was, it was, it was all right. It was passable. I mean, like I said, it was fun, but let's be honest. We, we are all riding this pack Orange Cassidy feud too hard. So, honestly, it doesn't matter if it's Chucky Taylor. It doesn't matter if it's Trent Beretta. If it ain't Orange Cassidy, we ain't that invested. Either way, match goes on. Pack gets a brutal out the win. There wasn't going to be any question about it. But afterwards, we got a face-off between him and Trent. But then Orange has to come up in the thing and it'll be like, Only for the Lucha Bros to come out. I do have something else I need to do. I'm going to do that after I finish this thing. The Lucha Bros to come out and smash everybody. Pack is on the mic and tells you this is that triangle. And all of you in AEW, you brought this on yourself. And they did. They did. Because now you got Pack and the Lucha Bros basically having a, having their own trios group, and everybody is officially on notice. Now then, AEW, there were rumors going about about there being a trios belt. Now we're seeing a lot more multi man trios type of action. So that means not only do we got the tag team going on, but we do have the groups that already came in as a trios actually get a little bit of shine and get to do something for themselves. Now then, this will be dope. Definitely building to show the shine. Not to mention, eventually they can bring OVE out because you still got the, got the strong hearts. OWE needs to go. I'm sorry, I said OVE. OWE needs to come up, needs to come back in. See, that's the problem. Down on AEW. Y'all need to be treating uh, OWE like WCW treated the uh, the uh, Cruiserweight back in the day. The Lucha Doors, bring them in. Again, trio belt. Needs a trio belt. Will be those to see. Now, cool. That's fine. After one nasty ass spot where basically Pentagon and Vitamin on Orange Cassidy's neck and uh, his neck, not his neck, his ear in a very, very sexual way. Oh, uh, then we get, oh, God, the best man on the motherfucking mic in AEW as far as hills go. MJ fucking up and goddamn. I have, I hate MJF so fucking much, but I gotta respect this man. You gotta respect MJF's work, his ability to actually go in the ring, his dedication to being a, like, to be honest, for anybody who says that wrestling is dead, MJF is one of those guys that's bringing it back to life. MJF, as a, is the best heel in the company. More than Pat, more than the Lucha Brothers, more than the Dark Order, more than Jericho and the Inner Circle. MJF is the best fucking heel in the company and possibly the world. I cannot think of a better, more despicable heel committed to being what he is than MJF. Honestly, round of applause, MJF, you fucking bastard. You sweet, beautiful bitch. Now we go on to the main event of the evening. Where, where a un, uh, uh, unnecessarily enforced stipulation being is that if Moxley can make it out by himself, Jericho would leave the company for 60 days. Now then, Jericho will be going on to work Fonzie pretty soon, so he's going to be written off somehow, some way. I kind of figured it was going to happen tonight, but it did not because as we were going to get a tag match of 
Sammy Guevara and the champion Chris Jericho versus Darby Allen and the current AEW World Champion, John Moxley. Moxley got that ass jump. Should have thought we all knew it was gonna be coming. Of course, he doesn't come through the traditional way. He always comes out to the crowd. So you had pride and part of powerful and Jay Carter waiting in the crowd to jump that ass. They jump that ass, knock out that ass. That ass is incapacitated for the whole match. But this is definitely a shining moment for Darby Allen that put everything on his on his back. God damn, bro. Oh god, oh god, Darby Allen is going to be AEW champion. Sooner rather than later. And I'm pretty sure before MJF becomes champ. Fuck, I love Darby Allen. This is another shining performance. And he literally, in defeat, this man shines bright like a fucking diamond in the sun. 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 Put on. Definitely a good main event. I fucked with it. I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was Good. So, unfortunately, again, he gets that L and then gets jumped by the inner circle. But Moxley brings his ass out. Like, Moxley got fucked up for like a solid ass five ish minutes. And came the fuck back out. Like, kudos to him. He fucking committed to that shit. But he came out, came out, talked to Terry on the inner circle. They start whipping ass. But come on, it's one on five. Even, the, even with the best of circumstances, you still getting your ass whipped and he got his ass whipped. Up to the stage, and then he got fucking, fuck, he got the fuck, it's like sort of an asshole, bro, because he got the shield Cerberus power bomb through a fucking table off the stage. I'm just like, y'all disrespectful bitches. Okay, so, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and run through this real quick, because this was not a great, a great episode of Dynamite because of what was going on in ring. This is a great dinosaur because of excitement building, story building, and then also the end rework was not bad, but just, just just literally giving me shit to want to grasp onto for next week. They're still doing a good job. This is definitely a good post show because of course they're gonna have to go go back and talk about what happened at the show, and it's fine. I mean, this is definitely a great. This is definitely when you cannot afford to bring in some of the lesser seen talent for shows where you need to actually have the stars and the uh, the people involved in the. Pay-per-view and continuing to build on fuse and they're doing it and it's so fucking good. Um, let me see. La uh, I gave I, g I gave Revolution a B plus to an A minus. Today I'm I'm grateful to say that this was a A, a solid A episode. Near perfect. Near perfect. I wish I would have had a debut though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fucking eat. I wish it could have been a Matt Hardy, but I also figured that it wasn't really gonna happen because they're still working out the. They are still working out the uh, free to delete deal, so we still got that going on. I might talk about that in the, in the follow video, but we still have that going on. We still have Brody Lee not here on the cuff, and I was expecting to see Lance, but he didn't show up today. But with the inclusion of Jake of Jake the Snake fucking Roberts basically killing it with the with still building on the feud now going from the tag teams of the Young Bucks versus the tag team champions of Omega and Heyman now it's more now it's more compact now it's really focusing on Heyman and Matt and honestly Matt was the one doing a lot of the talking that actually got the shit moved forward and this has been building so yes I want that match cool we're still gonna we're st we are still reminded of how good MJF is. Big Swole got a little, got a nice little bit of shine, and thank God it is because I want Big Swole to go with Big Swole versus Nala Rose is gonna be fucking great, solid, good. Britt Brit Baker is okay with me. I, I don't, I can't complain about Britt Baker. Um, the feuds with with uh, now is gonna be the best friends and Death Triangle. Fucking hell, that's gonna be great. Well, like we're getting so many feuds going on. We're getting the slow buildup of AEW's uh, six-man or trio division coming in. We have ROH in the building because Cole Cabana and SCU, that's ROH through and through. Hell yeah, shout outs to the, to the work, to the work. Not to mention, early this week, Tony Khan, talk, I believe it was Tony Khan or somebody from AEW talked about how talent sharing is, a ne is necessary and is good. I, it, it was either Tony Khan or it was like Jericho or somebody that's, that brought that up. 
Either way it goes. Damn good episode of Dynamite. Please keep this going until next Wednesday so I can actually give it my first A plus of the year for any show. I was skimming through a little bit in NXT. And NXT was again solid on the in ring shit, but I'm sorry, there is nothing going on that's really got me compelled to want to look. I, I, I am sorry. I tried to do it. I tried, ladies and gentlemen. I was giving NXT a solid shot, but Dynamite just pulled me in too fucking much. God damn, this is so good. Anywho, it's your boy WFC Doria. Well, thank you for joining me. And hopefully I'll see you next time.